The Producers, featuring the most respected international talent in the world of audio production and voiceover. Radio, TV, film, and online. In-depth interviews, industry insights, putting you on the inside. This is The Producers Podcast with Ryan Dream. Hi again. Thanks for checking it out. Uh, Let's see here. I have three things to do. I'm keeping myself on track because this is maybe the 15th time I've tried this intro. First thing is to talk about the intro and another podcast. Second thing, to talk about uh, a little special event that happened for this podcast. Third thing is to introduce my guest. So first, I got an email from a guy uh, titled 15 Takes. And uh, he was joking that, yeah, I do my podcast. Sometimes it takes me 15 takes to get my opener right. I don't think I brought this up on the podcast before, and I should have. Uh, Dom Evans sent me that email. He started a podcast. It's similar to this one. And believe me, I'm a more the merrier kind of guy, so I'm very happy to promote his podcast. It's called Prodcast. Very fitting. I will link to it uh, on the, the post for Brad Leesk's episode. Uh, maybe someday I'll, I'll do a better job on my site to collect a lot of links. I used to do that. I had a big old page with a lot of links. Well, they all got old or outdated, and then I didn't want to keep up with it, and I'm lazy, so I just threw the page away. Maybe I'll do that again someday. But for right now, if you're hearing this episode in the future, and you want to figure out the link to that, and you're not good with typing a single word into Google, okay, that's fine. Go to my site, search podcast or Brad Leesk, that should get you there. I'll link it there. But Dom's a great guy. And in fact, I believe his first guest on his podcast was the guest I'm going to have today. Even more fitting, Dom is Australian. He's the head of production for Fox FM in Melbourne. He works with Sidey, who gets mentioned a bunch on this podcast. It's a small world, literally, because these are all Australians I'm talking about, and I'm sitting in Texas. And we all know each other. So anyway, thanks to Dom for reaching out, though. It made me feel a little bit better. And congrats to him on his podcast. I hope you go listen and enjoy it. Uh, if you can, while you're checking his out, uh, I'm told to do this. Please leave me a rating and a review on my podcast. It helps... I guess people hear it, and uh, if you, whatever you want to rate it and review it, I don't care. I'm not going to tell you what to write or how many stars or whatever the heck. But I would really appreciate it if you could throw a rating or review up there. It does help the exposure and other people getting to hear this. Uh, it kind of escaped my mind, or I don't know, maybe I mentioned it and I just forgot, but technically I have uh, passed the 10 year mark on this show. Uh, August of 2008, I started this with the intention of talking to people that were more awesome than me and putting something back out into the community that would help people because I had a lot of help when I came up in the business. So I called up Dave Fox since I kind of knew him. Hey, we be on this new podcast I'm going to start. Of course he said yes. Of course he was awesome and he's been on again since then. But that was August of 2008. 10 years later, that was last month. Uh, hit that little anniversary. Pretty arbitrary, but I'm really thankful. And I wanted to say the best part about this by far has been the people. The guests, yes, getting to know all of these awesome people. And now when I show up to places, they're like, hey, you're the guy with the podcast that I talked to seven years ago. Yeah, that's me. Awesome. We've become friends. I've been able to hire some of them, vice versa. We've worked together, collaborated. Um, But also everybody that reaches out to me and says, hey, I love that thing. It's helped me get into my career or um, I got to meet so-and-so because of your show. Whatever. That by far the people have been the best part. Uh, So I will keep doing this. Uh, that's that. So just thank you for you know helping me make this last 10 years and maybe 10 more. Uh, now to the guest. Brad Leesk, as I already mentioned, is the guest. He is the network imaging producer for Nova Entertainment based in Sydney. He works for that brand all around the country. Uh, Nova 96.9 specifically in Sydney. Um, we will get into everything about his job, but let me say a couple things. I think it's possible he's the youngest guest I've ever had on the show. I did not go back and... <laughs> check all the 123 or so episodes and see who might be younger. Uh, But at 24 years young, having been in the business for five years, already having a network imaging producer role in Sydney is a pretty major accomplishment. Super nice guy, really talented, and I'm really happy to have him on the show. Um, So if I mention the fact that he's kind of young throughout the episode, that's why, because he is kind of young. Uh, he's on SoundCloud, soundcloud.com slash Brad underscore Leesk. He's on Instagram, Brad underscore Leesk. He's on Facebook, Brad Leesk. 
you want to spell that, L-E-A-S-K. Don't forget to check out the post. There's some uh, extra pictures there. If you go to ryandreen.com, depending on when you go, if you just look for Brad Leesk, you'll find it. Uh, he sent in a few uh, fun pictures to show you as well. All right, that should do it. Woo! I think I got that out okay, and I'm not redoing this intro any more times. So uh, after a really solid uh, buck 20 or so demo, we will have on, out of Sydney, the one and the only Brad Leesk. Nova 96.9. Wake up with Fitzy and Whipper. Let's do a swap. I'll take some of your heart and you can have my boobs. Nova's greatest hits work day. All day while you work. Drive home. Kate's in the muddy. Kate, she vomited everywhere. I've got a bad oyster. You can't help I, that. An oyster in the shape of a pint glass. Can I have a dozen of your Tui's new oysters, please? Yeah, you did. This is Nova 96.9 Sydney. Nova. Hey, this is Justin Timberlake. Right here on Nova. I love you all. Nova. Yes. All the car. Money. Yeah, yeah. All the best stuff. Which will you choose? Nova, you are unbelievable. Chrissy, Sam and Brownies, Money or the Master. Tomorrow from eight and all across your day. Only on Nova 100. You ready? Nova's. Thank you, Nova. It's a pleasure to be here. Red. Sick. Your money can't buy experience with the world's biggest artist. This is not real. And there it is, some of the brilliance of my guest today, the network imaging producer for Nova Entertainment based in Sydney. Although I actually forgot to double check that in case there was a change. But anyway, Brad Leesk, are you in Sydney? I'm in Sydney, man. Yeah, I'm in Sydney. <laughs> Yeah. You got it right. I was pretty sure, but I, right as I said that, I'm like, wait a minute. They, those guys are all over the place. So, yeah. Hey, thanks for being on the show, Brad. I appreciate it. Mate, uh, thank you for having me. This is uh, this is awesome. I've um, I've spent my whole career listening to this podcast and listening <laughs> to my idols on here, mate. So uh, to yeah. be featured on it is uh, is a big deal for me. So thank you for having me, mate. I appreciate yeah, it. that's cool. Yeah, I'm just the uh, vehicle, but it is cool. At this point, I've had uh, people from all over the world. I had one of your... Uh, I was going to joke and say your enemy. He's really not. You guys don't cross over that much, but Sidey, <laughs> yeah. he was on recently. But you guys teed off in the Iron Imager a while back. We so did. I'll, I'll bring that up later. Definitely. But, <laughs> yeah, definitely. Um, let, me, let me immediately stray from my script, but it's something that I sometimes forget to ask. Do you ever get together with other imaging producers in town and hang out, have round tables, talk shop? That's so funny, man. We actually all caught up last Friday night. Um Dom Evans came to town, so we all, I guess that was our excuse to get together. Um, yeah. so- Sidey, nice. um, myself, Dom, a few others from the net- from other networks, Hunty, a few of the guys from here. Um, yeah, it was just a big, just a big round table of dudes drinking beers and nerding out about radio. Nice, that's cool. I've I've asked that to a couple people, and like I said, I usually forget, but. I think in the States, depending on where you are, I've gotten the response of, oh, no, no, no. You know, we don't really? do that. Yeah. That, that wouldn't be cool. Our bosses wouldn't like that. There, there's no vibe like that there, though, it seems. No, definitely not. I, don't, I definitely don't think we do it enough. Um, you, you look around, especially between Melbourne and, um, and Sydney, there's just so many talented dudes in those markets. Um, and catch-ups definitely happen, but... Uh, we should definitely be more proactive in, in making them happen more because it's uh, it's good for everyone. Absolutely. Well, I mean, my favorite events of the year are when, you know, do a worldwide radio summit. For and I'm sure. standing there with you, guys from the UK, guys from LA, and gals yep. from Atlanta, New York. I mean, there's nothing better. No, there's just nothing better. Absolutely not. It's just, yeah, it's such an inspiring place to be. Um, and it's, it's good to talk about radio and, and imaging. And yeah, it's great. Am I crazy or does it feel like if you were to get a bunch of program directors in a room, a bunch of voice artists in a room, and then a bunch of imaging people in the room, you're going to have so much less of that sort of side-eyed glance and sort of sizing people up and the attitude or the ego amongst the imaging producers than you would amongst the other groups? Yeah. Yeah. I, I, is it, I, I agree. Is it weird? We're, yeah. Is it? Yeah. And, and I'm not even talking down to programmers or, and I am a voice talent, but it just seems like in our side of the business, we're all just like, I don't know if it's not that we're not competitive, but we would just rather be 
cool with each other. Yeah, I, know. I guess. And there's just like a, uh, an instant like uh, respect there. It's like, man, I know, like I know what you do. I know what you go through. You know, bring it in. You know. <laughs> Yeah, well, you know, we're in a the, the imaging side is very little recognition, a lot of man hours, yeah, and it, m- more of a laborious dra- job than others possibly. Yeah, definitely. Um, cool. Let me. I'll go back to my script now. Oh, you know, before I forget, I will have mentioned this uh, when I officially produced this, but uh, you're on the social medias. I think you're more of an Instagram guy, though, right? I, I could say Twitter, but I I don't really even think. You use Twitter, is ha- that correct? I have a Twitter, uh, but I don't use it. I just checked it out. Yeah. I, th- <laughs> I think I've done one think you have, tweet that says yeah. tweet. Yeah. <laughs> yes. Yeah. I just, I actually know that is the case because I just went and looked. Because <laughs> I noticed you didn't give me your Twitter and I thought, yeah, I don't think he does that. Because he's not, uh, well, you're still young. I didn't really, uh, I mentioned it in my intro, but. Uh, you're on the young side. We'll get to that too. All right. So you're on Instagram. Uh, I'm thinking just look up Brad Leesk and they'll find you. Brad yeah. underscore Leesk. Do that. Leesk. Uh, SoundCloud. You're pretty active on SoundCloud. Yeah. I haven't been as much lately. Um, I still go on it a lot and, uh, and listen to what's going on around, around the trap. So yeah, definitely, uh, shoot me a follow on there and I'll follow you back for sure. Nice. Yeah, absolutely. And then you're on Facebook too. Yep. Um, all the good stuff. Cool. Uh, so let's take it all the way, all the way back, because you're so old. But uh, your first real job, quote unquote, what was that? My first real job, uh, it was essentially this one. Um, my title hasn't uh, changed since I got my first um, full time job, so to speak. Yeah, I think I said it, but network imaging producer of Nova Entertainment, based in Sydney. Uh, I'll get to more about that job, but. What was your first non-real job? Like, how did you get to that job then? So I, um, way back in high school, I, I started playing in a band and um, sort of found my way into uh, like production studios, recording demos um, with the band. And that was sort of my first introduction to um, post-production, Pro Tools. Um, and that sort of uh, immediately sparked my interest. I remember just walking into... Um, the studio at the time and seeing Pro Tools and just seeing the outboard gear and just had this feeling of, man, this is, this is cool, but like, this is, I feel like this is what I want to do, watching the engineers work. Mm -hmm. And um, yeah, so I guess that started and then um, started uh, doing that quite a bit um, and then set up a little sort of Pro Tools set up at home, started doing demos with the band just out of my room. Um, and would just spend days on YouTube just watching tutorials and um, sort of learning the back end of Pro Tools and, and how to do it all. Um, yeah. And then, yeah, did that for a couple of years through high school and then uh, started studying a uh, advanced diploma of sound production, I think it was, um, at RMIT in Melbourne, uh, which is where I'm originally from. Um, did that for two years. Um, and in the first six months of that course, we had this, um, this networking class and it was like, it was more of just like a, um, time to focus on networking and trying to figure out what you want to do, making contacts within the industry, um, on a really broad, uh, sort of aspect. Mm -hmm. Um, a lot of the guys I was studying with were really focusing on sort of, uh, big recording studios and live sound. And I remember I hit a point uh, in that first six months and went, ah, I just, I kind of lost the passion a little bit for um, for recording bands and, and that sort of side of of the business and, and, and mixing and yeah. all that. It wasn't, I just stopped sort of resonating with me. Um, and then I, I just, I sent an email to uh, like a, a job website. I was just asking a couple of questions um, and miraculously somehow it got forwarded onto my now boss, um, Dan Pearson. Um, he got back to me and said, Hey mate, you know, come in, um, you know, check out the studios here at Nova. Um, and, uh, and I'll, and I'll sort of give you a rundown of sort of what it takes to get into radio. And then I thought, wow, like radio, that'd wow. be, a, that'd be a cool job. That'd be great. Anyway, I was in Melbourne at the time. He was in Sydney. Put me on to um, uh, a guy called Matt Dower in Melbourne, uh, who um, became one of the, the biggest influences in my career. 
Um, and then, yeah, got into Nova there and just started doing sort of bits and pieces of work experience. Um, sort of played to my strengths a little bit at the start and would do some of the acoustic mixes of artists that would come through the door. Um, so I guess mm-hmm. that was sort of my in there. Um, so the the musical background was pretty key for you. Yeah, I guess just in terms of uh, uh, being useful um, yeah. to, to, yep. to, to Maddie in Melbourne then. Um, uh, so I'd get the call up maybe, you know, once every couple of weeks to come in. And it was more of just an assistant capacity, helping him out and sort of, um, yeah, just mixing the acoustics that, that, uh, that came through there. And then... It just sort of happened so organically from there. Um, the, f- the first time I w- walked into Nova, um, Maddie showed me, um, just opened up a session and, and played a promo. And my, it was my first really, um, my first experience of seeing seeing a promo. I just remember going like, holy shit, like that is awesome. Yeah. Um, like seeing how the sausage is made and yeah, it turns out exactly. it's really awesome. Yeah. That, yeah. yeah. Um, and just all the moving parts. And it, I just remember at that moment having that same feeling that I did when I walked into that recording studio a few years ago, huh. just going, mm-hmm. yeah, th- like this is what I want to do. This is awesome. Still knowing nothing about it. Like, <laughs> but hey, this looks cool. Mm-hmm. I want to do this. And then, mm-hmm. um, mate, it just, like I said, it happened organically from there. I just, for the next two years, I, uh, well, for the next year and a half, I continued my studies um, and I would just um, go into Nova maybe two or three times a week and just sit with all the guys there. Um, there's a soft AC station down in Melbourne as well. Um, mm-hmm. uh and then there's a there was a Brecky producer at the time, um, a drive producer, commercials. Just in just in case anybody doesn't know, Brecky is breakfast, which is breakfast. morning show. <laughs> yeah, morning show producer. <laughs> hey, for um, the for some of the Americans that may not know all the terminology. <laughs> yeah. um, so basically, there was just yeah a team of five guys down there um, who pretty much just taught me everything I know. I would just come in every week and and sit behind them um, and just learn off each of them. Um, constantly and then I guess the work started to trickle in there um, because I was always around the station I kind of would get the odd job here and there filling in for the morning show producer who who would take a day off or drive producer would take a day off or was sick um, I was just sort of yeah. the guy that was just always there um, so if I can just hold on, uh, when you started off like that and it sounds like you were kind of more on a part-time basis but were you actually an employee of the station or were you just Kind of that, you know, just just getting in there and just showing up. Uh, it was, it was kind of a weird one. I was just showing up, um, and just I was just working for free, pretty pretty much. Anytime mm-hmm. there was a there was an official filling gig, I was on the books. Um, so I tend to, uh, like I picked up some paneling shifts and stuff, um, like paneling out pre recorded shows and stuff, just to just to sort of get a little bit of money flowing through. Um, yeah, but. Yeah, yeah, I would, I would, I would be getting paid for the for the days that I would officially be filling in. Um, okay, and then and and for the realities of it, though. Um, well, actually, can you give me a like? What year is this? How long ago is this? God, this would have been two thousand and probably two thousand and thirteen. End of two thousand and thirteen. Mm. Yeah, yeah. So five five ish years five-ish, ago. Five ish. Yeah. Yep. Um, and. Did you also have a day job? Because I like to kind of get a feel for the realities of how people really do have to get started. You know, other job you had to yeah, hold down, that, or just school and this. Yeah, that was a pretty intense time. I remember I was working. Yeah, I was working as as a labourer overnight um, at a oh, really? at a like at an arena, Rod Laver Arena in Melbourne. I was doing that, studying during the day, doing Nova, and I think I had a job at a supermarket at the time as well. So it was um, really. Yeah, it was a pre- wow. <laughs> it was a pretty busy couple of years, but uh, uh, an enjoyable couple of years nonetheless. Um, so it's one of those because uh, I've you know when I was younger I had two or three jobs at the same time, but mm. you you get your full time gig and they're like, all right, here's your studio, here's your tasks, and you can knock it out in eight to ten hours a day, and you're kind of like, oh, now what do I do? <laughs> yeah. I have to go to my next job. I don't, yeah. I don't get how this life works now. <laughs> <We're> gonna- <laughs> I'm bored. Come on, give me more. <laughs> well, I think you just end up spending the time that you would at your other job 
at the radio job, really, wouldn't you? Yep. That was going to say, that's what it, or you take on a side gig of some type. Exactly. We'll talk about I'm not, yours. I'm not working yeah. hard enough. I need to do more hours. <laughs> <laughs> well, then you punch out a family of some kind, in, in some capacity, and, yep. and then it's a whole different set. Okay. So, uh, at, at some point, how long ago were you actually offered the full-time gig? And, oh, it, so you're in Melbourne doing this sort of part-time situation and finishing up school. Yep. Then tell me about how the full-time gig so then, about. yeah, kept that going for a year and a half. And the timing worked really, really well. Um, I finished the course in about November um, and then sort of continued at Nova um, over the next two months, sort of into January. And then uh, a guy called Nick Slater, um, who was in the network imaging role before I was, um, and that was, that was a newly created role. Um, he was only in it for a couple of months, moved up to Sydney to work on the night show. And that was kind of like the perfect opportunity for me to, to jump into that role then, which at the mm-hmm. time was, um, was again, more of a, an assistant sort of, um, imaging job working under Matty Dower in Melbourne. Um, mm-hmm. just in a, yeah, like I said, in a, an assistant capacity, um, which was really great for my skill set at the time. Cause I, I sort of knew how to make promos and do bits and pieces, um, uh, yeah, it was just sort of the, the perfect time to, to jump in and, um, and really just sink my teeth into, into radio. Yeah. And so that's Melbourne in your full time now as an assistant, but at some point you, you go to Sydney or did I miss? Yeah. So there? I've been in Sydney for six months now, so I've only really just moved up here. Okay. So Sydney's really recent. Really okay. recent. So yep. in fact, when I saw you, had you in May? So what month are we in here? So where are we? Had you just started there? Uh yeah. So when was when did I see you? That was start of May. Uh, May May first. Yeah, I yeah. started up here. Uh, pretty much at the start of March, end of February. Yeah. So I pretty yeah, much yeah. just made the move up here. Yeah. So what 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 kind of a move is that in your radio landscape? There, your network imaging producer of some sort in Melbourne, and then you take this gig in Sydney. It was. Uh, is that a, is that a major leap? Is it? Uh yeah. It's kind of a weird one. Um. So yeah, like I said, I've still got the same same role. Um, Dan Pearson, who was in Sydney, uh, made a move to Brisbane, um, just a lifestyle move, moved up there, um, mm-hmm. and then so my role more or less just relocated to Sydney, um, okay, uh, to work out of here. And then in the meantime, um, Maddie Dower in Melbourne, um, uh, who was group production director of the Nova Network, has stepped away from radio. Um, and now PSO, Dan Pearson in Brisbane leads the network now. So I guess in terms of, okay. in terms of taking a step up, um, it's been really good to get to Sydney and, and, um, sort of be the guy on the ground here. I think, um, you know, it could be true in a lot of countries, you know, in the States, a lot of people might have a goal of getting to, you know, LA or Chicago and maybe in the UK, you might have a goal of getting to London. But for you, was was Sydney sort of on your list? Like, I want to get a gig there, or was this more of a surprise? And- uh, it was kind of something that I'd always, in the back of my mind, um, uh, th- knew would happen one day. I I kind of know this is the market to be in, um, especially with yeah. the way that the Nova Network runs. Is that everything sort of Sydney's the hub? Um, everything's pretty well happens out of here. Um, so it wasn't something that I was like, oh, I've got to get to Sydney. Like Sydney's going to be where I'm going to be. Um, I just remember the like the job was floated to me, and it was it was um, I was approached about moving up here um, for, for like for this gig essentially. Um, and I just remember going, yeah, that's now's the right time to to move. And yeah, um, yeah. And it just sort of yeah happened organically. And um, yeah, was was stoked to get up here. It's a, it's a great city. Yeah, well, that's cool. Yeah, I actually didn't realize you hadn't been there. So, like I said, when I saw you, I kind of thought you'd been there for a long time, and it only been a couple months. Yeah, a couple of months. So, yeah. con- con- congrats on that. So now Thank let's you, dive in a little bit more. Uh, network imaging producer. I generally think I know what that means, but explain to me what all that entails for you on a day to day basis. So it's pretty much just um, it's all the imaging for uh, for Nova One Hundred in Melbourne. Um, and 96.9 here in Sydney, um, and then the Nova Network as well. It's a, in terms of the day-to-day. So let me clarify. So does that mean you do some stuff that airs nationally on the entire Nova Network, but you also produce 
quote unquote local imaging for those two particular stations. Exactly right. Yeah. Um, okay. Not not t- totally solo. We sort of we share it around in the team. There's there's a team of um, three of us that that sort of that gets divvied up to. Um, but I, okay. I tend to focus on. Um, I still do a lot of Nova 100 imaging, um, and then yeah, it's a pretty fluid arrangement. We just sort of, as it comes through, we um, we divvy it up and and we get it done. So anyway, I actually kind of cut you off there. Apologize, but what? How much yeah. of your work is more like a local radio imaging producer, where you're focusing on stuff for the local Sydney or Melbourne station? Pretty pretty well, all of it. Um, it's it's Nova runs uh, like. Very, uh, it, it is a, a real network in the sense of, um, to give you an idea of a week, uh, on say a Monday, we'll produce all of our integrated intros, um, all of the new music that comes through, and that's network. So that'll play around the whole, the whole of the country, all five markets. Um, and then there might be a local tactic going on in Melbourne. Um, um, at the minute, there is, there's a money or the Mazda tactic where we're giving away cars and cash essentially so i'll i'll mm-hmm. look after that i'll look after the maintenance of that um promos um everything production wise that surrounds that at the same time um we're we're going to be running um the other week we did like a madonna's birthday celebration um on nova so i'll be working on that in the background and that ran over um three of the markets um so i'll be working with the pd in sydney on that um and then, you know, there could be some weekend activity in Sydney that I'm looking after for the weekend. So, it, like I mentioned, it's sort of a fluid arrangement. We sort of just approach it to how big each mm. person's workload is. And, um, and and would it be Dan, uh, Dan Pearson? Yep. yep. Did I just screw up his name? Yep. Because I've definitely heard of him before. Yep. Yep. Uh, I'm just, I think I've said this before. I'm pretty terrible with names. <laughs> I remember a face, no problem from a decade ago. But anyway, Uh is he kind of the, you know, he's the, the captain of the boat yep. and everything sort of starts with him and then he disperses it? Yeah, it's kind of the structure that sort of um, just sort of comes down. Yeah, I would think you, you with a system like that, and I know there's, a, you know, some of the best imaging in the world, and I'm going to get to this later too, but it's coming out of you and your team and then even some of your competition. Definitely. But sounds like there's a lot of it. And if you have multiple people working on the same stations and the same networks, yeah, that, there could just be some logistical nightmares that could happen if it's not kept under control. Yeah, yeah, I, I, I can imagine. Um, luckily for for me, it's, it's it's kept under control and and everything se- yeah. seems to run smoothly. And um, yeah, cool, cool. Um, well, I kind of hinted at this. So why does it seem like? And I'm not even saying bad about like UK production or the stuff I hear coming out of you know Russia and France and the States, but Australian imaging seems to be better <laughs> and there's a lot more focus placed on it. Do you believe that's true and also why? Yeah, it, uh, it's interesting you say focus, um, focus like placed on it. I, I, I definitely agree in, in part, um, mm-hmm. not to rag on on uh, imaging anywhere else in the world. Um, I, I, I do feel like, yeah, there's, there's a lot more focus placed on imaging in Australia and, and a lot more um, time given. Quite often you'll, you'll hear of um, someone in the States producing a number of stations um, in different formats and, and, you know, have an insane workload. And it's not to say that the workload here isn't massive um, cause it, cause it is. Um, but uh, yeah, I, I just, just think, we just place a little bit more time and um, and focus in on on projects here. It still seems like the the companies themselves though value it pretty significantly. They they don't think it's sort of a necessary evil of operating a radio station or network or group. They actually praise uh, you know value it and and put a lot more resource into it. It yeah, feels like I agree, mate. Totally. We've got um, Is like it- for example here in Sydney, we've got um, three. Uh, imaging producers working on three shows um, and they're full-time gigs and incredibly busy and incredibly talented dudes. Um, yeah. But there is like an assigned producer for, for, for the show. Right. I've noticed that there's the breakfast show imaging producer yep. at, I mean like kiss uh, at uh, like triple M is it, is it also at a station like that? Yep. Yep. 
Yep. Or Definitely. A network. What? So you do some of the work for the station, I would say, in general. But so are there four total people mainly producing for that one station? For this one station? Yeah. So like uh, the Brecky Show imaging producer, um, Michael Snitch, he'll look after the breakfast show, which is local, six till nine. He'll look yep. after all the in-show um, promos, anything around the show. Um, and then uh, Darcy Milne, who I'm sure you've heard of, he looks after the yep. drive show, yep. which is national. Um, so that goes out across the whole network. Um, and then Dan Bazina looks after um, the night show, which goes out across the whole network as well. Yeah, I, I would say most people listening, um, that's different than they would be used to. Sure. You know? And then in, in each in each each of the local markets that Nova has, there is a a, um, a local producer for the the Brecky show. And, yeah, 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 yeah. It's just, I mean, it's great. It's uh, it's just good to see. It's just weird because Australia in general, just I think a lot of people agree. It always comes up when we go to these conferences and we talk about it. Um, you know, if there's any kind of a competition, half the entrants are going to be from Australia. <laughs> <laughs> if if you're talking about the top imaged stations and networks australia is always in the conversation yep. and it has been for a while for it's, sure uh, yeah, the, yeah it, it's it's good i mean the, it's great to see the caliber of talent in this country is absolutely enormous it's um yeah it's incredible yeah and, and not to take anything away from you but i, I always feel bad because if i have uh, you know i've had multiple people on from australia and names always get brought up and it's all people that I should have on this podcast and I'm absolutely you know I, I just hope nobody over there is like that that what prick about me has this, yeah he's got Leesk on there yeah, but he won't Brad have me on screw that guy this guy sucks <laughs> yeah what are they doing that podcast is worthless no no but I I do I know there are so many great talented people okay I, I'll stop uh you know being a fanboy for Australia so much but you have to get out here one time my man get out here. oh man yeah, you know, I, I don't even mind traveling that far, but boy, that that flight to Australia, it's pretty daunting, right? Oh, it's Back not that forth. bad. It's fine. <laughs> yeah, says it's the, all right. Says, no big deal. says the guy who's done it twice. <laughs> oh, hey, twice though. That's more than a lot of people. <laughs> yeah, true. Now, I, I, uh, yeah, I would say uh, Australia. There's, I, I, I can't believe how many people I know there. To be honest, just from this industry, but for sure. Um, uh, switch gears completely for a bit. This is a topic that I know a lot of people in the voiceover world like to hear, although I don't know how many pure play VO talents are still listening at this point, but whatever. <laughs> when you work with a voiceover talent, some of your imaging voices, um, I guess let me start by saying, generally speaking, how do you work with them? Email copy, they send back, boom. Are there any other things that have to happen when you're working with your talent? Uh, so we will always get the talent into the station, um, okay, and and direct them face to face. Um, you said always, which is a pretty firm one hundred percent word. Not is it is it really always or? Uh, yeah, it's always. Um, yeah, that's. Great. I mean, uh, we. I mean, we ran a tactic um, uh, three months ago where we used a, an American VO, um, and in that case, it was um, it was a script. Um, with like phonetics and stuff on it to, to yeah and then we sort of receive it back overnight um but i that's kind of all i really know is is um local voices just coming into the station and and directing them face to face one on one yeah see that's another thing that a lot of people listening to be like that's insane yeah okay i can't get my voice talent live no but that's great so you personally they bring them into your studio i mean or is it somebody else's responsibility to direct the talent there? uh no so uh currently all our voices are sydney based um so they come in here and i'll direct them out of my studio here um okay uh if it was a case of the the voices were um in melbourne someone in melbourne would would direct sure um yeah it's pretty fluid in that sense um so a lot of the next things i was going to ask about because these are kind of the uh, the, the questions that VO talents have. Yep. Um, so, you know, I was going to bring up, you know, turnaround time, the way they deliver it, how many takes they do, outtakes and all that. But since they're standing in front of you, how quickly do you kind of require your talent to get in there? You know, how much turnaround time, quote unquote, do you have? We we have um, set sessions every week. Um, so we have uh, a Wednesday session and a Thursday session every week okay. um, booked in. And then we sort of have a floating session as well where if uh, something pops up and the PD needs needs something done, um, 
or one of the show guys needs something voiced, we'll um we'll book in another session. And this is for the network too, mind you. So um, mm-hmm. uh, any all producers around the network have access to these sessions. Um, and yeah, so we have those two sessions booked in um, weekly, and then. In terms of like a turnaround time of getting in here, um, it could be a case of you know nine a.m. in the morning. We we need an urgent change, or we need um, we need to get this promotion up, or whatever it is. Um, mm-hmm. We we can have the VO talent depending where they are at the time. They have busy lives too. Um, uh, within the hour, they could be in here, or it could be hey, they'll be here at three o'clock. Yeah. How long would a normal session last? How long are you in there recording the talent on an average day? Depends. On an average, I'd say about 40 minutes, 45 minutes. Okay. Um, so it doesn't crush your entire day each time you have a session. It can, and it has before, uh, but no. <laughs> <laughs> on, uh, on average, no, it, it's, it's fine. <laughs> yeah, I like that. It can. Yeah, it can. <laughs> yeah. um, so are you familiar with... Uh, is that generally true with uh, most of the bigger stations and networks in Australia, or at least Sydney, Melbourne, some of the bigger markets? Yeah, I believe so. Yep, definitely. Wow. Yep. Because uh, I think a lot of people listening will think that's sort of not crazy, but like that's such a luxury for you. Because I would say, I don't know, if I had to guess realistically of all American radio imaging, 95% of it would be audio, you know, scripts that were emailed out and audio that got emailed back in For some sure. capacity, you know? Yeah, yeah. I um, and, and from listening to your podcast quite a lot, I do get the sense that um, that the VO talent in the States, like voicing imaging for stations is like an eight hour a day gig. So there is, you don't really have that luxury of, of going into stations. Or, or not even going into stations about, you know, being directed down the line via ISDN or, or whatever it is. Yeah. Um, yeah, I was going to bring, yeah. Not to say that the VO talent aren't full-time here, because they definitely are. Um, yeah, I guess they just like they just have the, the luxury of of a little bit more time, perhaps, to, to, to come in. And that's just sort of the way it's always been. Well, and I would assume that if you have somebody on Nova... Actually, I don't know specifically who all of the voices you might use are, but... Uh, uh, and the, tell me the name of the main male voice. Uh, our main male voice now is Ziggy Taylor. Okay. Uh, I, no offense, but I don't know who that is. But that person is on uh, all of the local Novas and the network. Correct. Thus, that uh, he couldn't be on really any other major radio station in the country. No, no. So um, that's vastly different than here. <laughs> sure. Yeah. Okay. Yeah, definitely. Yeah, yeah, but I'm sure you guys are paying very. You're paying him handsomely, I would assume. Oh so. uh, yeah, yeah. I mean, he, yeah, he has regular <laughs> sessions, and he's um, yeah, he's, he's across the yeah. the network. So he um, yeah, yeah, I guess it's in his interest to uh, to not uh, voice any other yeah. networks. Yeah, that's cool. I, I feel like I've probably uh, gone on too long about this. It's interesting, and I think some people will, and they'll also say, "All right, move on." So <laughs> okay. <laughs> Let's see here. I did want to move on and hear about uh, music production because you already mentioned you you either were or still are a musician of some type. Um, do you still utilize a lot of your music skills in your production? Um, yeah. In terms of um, probably more so of the musical theory side of things. Um, sure. Uh, I think I've heard some of your stuff is, is very tuned, you know, very... Uh, in key, a lot, you know, a lot, a lot of the trendier yeah. imaging is these days. Yeah. So. No, yeah, I mean, I um, I I studied uh, musical theory in high school, um, only very basic, um, and I, I played guitar for quite a number of years. I still do, um, and I guess that's come in handy in terms of, um, proactively trying to to make my work, you know, harmonic and um in key and all that sort of stuff mm-hmm. um it's kind of stuff that i had in the back of my head and then when i started to approach my imaging in in a way of keeping it harmonically and and um and in key it just sort of ah you know it was kind of like a, a the, the pin dropped and i'm like okay i sort of i sort of know a little bit of this stuff already from from you know playing guitar and, and learning music and it just sort of happened yeah naturally and and how much of the 
content that you use in your productions, obviously short of original music from your artists and, you know, artist drops and that stuff. But how much of that do you actually produce from scratch? Any of it? None of it. the music beds? I don't know. Nah, none of it. No, I don't produce any music now. I'd love to. Yeah. Well, I was going to say, I I, I feel like you probably have the skills to sit down and make some music beds at least, if not some real original score. Yeah, I've never... Electronic, I don't know. To be honest, I've never tried... Um, I play I play the occasional you know s- synth chord in a, in yeah. a promo to, <laughs> to make something flow, but um, God, yeah. In terms of pr- producing and, and composing music, yeah, I'm definitely very very green in that space. I was going to ask this earlier, and I just really skipped over it. Um, we all do a lot of different things to get better at what we do, and since you are still relatively new in the business, what are some of the things that you do to keep getting yourself better and better at, at imaging production? Um. That's something that I'm that I'm really uh, focusing on now, um, more so, and just proactively sitting down each week, um, and just like watching a YouTube video on on a plugin, or ensuring every week I, I go through SoundCloud and listen to all the latest stuff that goes up. Um, what else? Um, I'll always try and um, I guess so lucky to work with so many talented guys in this building it's every week just trying yeah. to you know go in and just have a chat about you know how they did that or or what they did there um yeah it's definitely something that i'm trying to focus more on now is continually trying to learn something new and and prove and mm-hmm. find cool techniques and and you know creative ways to do things and I guess you sort of answered that, especially for when you were starting out. You got lucky and got a call and got to come in and actually see really talented people doing what they do live. For me, I know I, I need to sort of see it being done in front of me. It's really important. Yeah, totally. And that's something that um, that's a really good point because um, I kind of went from knowing nothing about radio to knowing a little bit and, and being um, proficient in like... a a year or two years just from like sitting behind these guys and, and, um, and just learning and and watching and, and just being a pest really. Um, and asking heaps of questions and just learning. And then I guess when you sort of get the job, that kind of eases up a little bit, it kind of stops. So I guess it's really important to still be proactively finding some time to go and sit behind, um, someone that you admire and respect and, and, um, and learn yeah never stop learning yeah yeah for sure um i'll ask this a little differently what is the most recent new plugin you bought most recent new plugin i bought i bought or or audio tool of any kind i guess but something i don't know top of your mind so what did i buy i I bought uh effectrix recently um okay uh i heard ben marks talking about it on your podcast um, yeah, I, thought, Ooh, I, I gotta get that. I um, learned about that from yep those guys. Yep. Um, and I bought I bought the mouth at the same time as well. Um, what about like uh, desert island compressor slash limiter or EQ? If you could only have one, do you have a favorite? And it'd have to be the L one because that's really oh, the L one. Yeah, okay. the only um, uh, limiter that I've I've really ever used. Uh, for example, have you've never have you used the L two? I have the L three. I have any, used any iteration the, of the L three. I have, uh, but we don't have them installed at work, so I kind of just okay. Yeah, it's I've never really okay. um, strayed away from the L one. I've heard you know various opinions on those. Some people say uh, one or uh, like uh, I think it, maybe it's the L two. I think I've heard that the L two colors more. I stopped using that a long time ago. Yeah. Anyway, you know people have strong opinions on compressors and limiters. They do. I have I have read um, might have been Andreas talking about it. The difference between the L one, the L two, and the L three, and that they all do col- yeah. color differently. Um, oh yeah, I don't have any experience yeah. with it, but um, yeah. They all sound different. Anyway, um, I don't know. What what other kinds of tools do you tend to use a lot? I mean, it sounds like you guys have a specific batch of plugins there in the quote unquote work studio that you, you know, you might be sort of limited to, um, anything else you use regularly that you love? Um, love pitch and time, love waves tune, um, love H delay, all the, all the good stuff. The Um, H, 
the H series in general. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, we've got the Waves Gold bundle here at work, I think. Um, yeah. Yeah, so I just, yeah, the Waves Gold bundle's incredible. Um, I love I love the Focusrite, uh, I don't know, I've got it here. The Focusrite D2 EQs, I use them quite a lot um, in my sessions. Okay. Um, but yeah, for the most part, keep it keep it relatively basic. What what kind of stuff do you do on your master bus on you know a typical piece of imaging? Um, I use uh, Chris Chris Nickel Wiz Effects put up a um, a template on his website years ago, um, and I remember mm-hmm. grabbing that and whatever the master settings on that bus are are what I, are what I'm on. Um, nice, just works works incredibly well. Um, it's very gentle. It doesn't do a whole lot. Um, just basic EQ compression limiter on the master bus. Nothing, um, nothing too, too crazy. Yeah. Cool. Cool. Um, anything else in your studio that you, you know, that gets a lot of mileage from you? We've got a, um, the Avid Artist Mix console in all of our studios. Um, so I use, I use the faders on that quite a lot, um, to, just within promos to have sort of natural sounding um, crescendos and decrescendos um, uh-huh. volume wise. Um, that's pretty well it. Yeah. Like I said, keep it yeah. relatively basic. Um, just try not to overthink it too much. Yeah. Right. Right. Um, what about the uh, Nova's Red Room? Yep. Explain Explain that. I, I you, you sent me a picture. Yep. So Nova's Red Room is basically... Um, uh, like a, a live music part of our business um, where we put the world's biggest artists. Um, God, that sounds like a promo. Um, world's biggest artists <laughs> uh, and put them in intimate environments for listeners to mm-hmm. to um, to watch. Um, so that's a big part of our brand. Um, and then in uh, my voice booth, actually, which is just in front of me now, um, which is the photo you can see, um, yeah, that's sort of like our acoustic space where we'll we'll quite often get um, bands to come in and and record just acoustics for our website, but we'll brand it as Nova's Red Room as well. Um, and you you look at that stage right out your booth window, right out your studio yeah, window. Yeah, yeah, I'm looking at it right now. It's right there. Yeah, and you you track the sessions from that in your studio. Correct. Yeah. Correct. Yeah, that's that's awesome. So, who was the last band or artist you had in there? So we had. Uh, the American Boys on Thursday night. Um, why don't we? That young, young boy band. The next big thing. Sure, I don't know who they are. That's, but on, yeah. that's on your iPod, isn't it, Ryan? No? Sure, yeah, absolutely. <laughs> yeah, it's the first song in all of my Spotify playlists because I, I knew have it. to always hear them first. I knew it. Uh, who who else have you had in there recently? <laughs> recently, we've had um, James Arthur. Um, who else have we had? I can pull it up right here and have a look. Um, so we've had, uh, Callum Scott, George Ezra, uh-huh. um, uh-huh. Paloma Faith, Why Don't We, as I've mentioned, Billie Eilish, BB Rexa. So they, yeah, they, they come nice. through. That's cool. Uh, that, I mean, that's an experience as an imaging producer that not many actually get. For sure. Yeah. It's definitely track a- track live music like that. It's a really cool, um, really cool way to break up the week and it's a, it's that's a cool, cool experience to have. Yeah. Yeah. You work in a bank. That's not how you're breaking <laughs> up your week, you know, yeah. pretty, um, uh, th- you might've already answered the question, but do you have a favorite part of your job? Is there something that's just like, damn, you know, I get to do that. I think it's, I think it's the whole thing to be honest, Ryan. Um, not, mm-hmm. not to sound cliche. Um, yeah, I do. Like I do. So I had, had that moment last Friday. Um, I was making like a little MJ mashup. Um, we were celebrating his his birthday uh, earlier yeah. in the week. And it was Friday morning. And I just thought, man, there are a lot worse ways I could be spending my Friday morning. But I'm, mm-hmm. I'm making a Michael Jackson mashup. This is this is pretty cool thing to get mm-hmm. paid for. So, yeah, like I said, mate, the, the, whole, the whole job is, uh, yeah, incredible. Yeah, it's awesome. And uh, I almost hate to ask this question, but you never know. Do you have a least favorite part of your job? <sighs> least favorite part. 
having to do stupid podcasts <laughs> on your Saturday. Yeah, yeah, exactly. You just hit the nail on the head. <laughs> no, I mean, yeah, I, yeah. I mean, I've ne- I haven't really put any thought into it. Um, least favorite part. <sighs> it, can't, it doesn't have to be something terrible. Just you I know, mean, like, I don't know. I I hate making weekend promos. I don't know. I love it all. <laughs> I love it all. Yeah, hey, yeah. No problem. There's nothing wrong with that. <laughs> yeah. Maybe I'll get back to you There's... in a few years on that one. <laughs> Yeah, let's uh, just because I, I I feel like I know Sidey pretty well now. For I'll, sure. I'll wait and see how you are when you're, you've had his much time <laughs> yeah, in the business. Yeah, yeah. Maybe I, I need some more flying <laughs> hours before I but start to again, hate anything. Yeah, I mean that's another guy though who doesn't really seem to dislike his job. No, he He's loves doing it. Damn fine for himself. Absolutely. This might be a dumb question, but since you are still on the younger side of the, of the spectrum, have you ever thought of like a five or a ten year plan? Is there anywhere you you envision like okay I want to get to here by this date, uh, mate? I the job I'm in right now and and the market I'm in right now was was sort of the was always the goal. Um, yeah, and I mentioned at the start that I would never really had a a um, hey I've got to be in Sydney or I've got to be there at this time. I kind of felt like um, that's where n- I, I, sh- I should be and I should go. Um, I, yeah, I'm I'm. I haven't really put a whole lot of thought into it. It's just sort of been something that's just happened. Um, yeah, I guess I'm I'm at my kind of at my ten year goal now. I guess. Um, yeah. In the job I'm well, doing now. It took now. you five years to get there. So. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Essentially. <laughs> uh, what about uh, Dan Pearson's job? Let's make news. You're gunning for him, right? You're <laughs> I'm take coming him after out. you, mate. Watch you take- out. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> 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 um, what well, you know, kind of want to get wrapped up here. I try not to take up too much of everyone's time, but um, before I get to sort of my final question, I know that you are also working with my old, old, old friends at Benstown. Love those uh, in guys. Fact, first, tell me a little bit about that. What does it you do for them? So I look after um, yeah, some of the some of the custom imaging that comes out um, from those guys. So each the, month. this. The stuff that they do for literally custom station imaging, like not for the service per se, but not for the service, no, just for yeah, for custom, uh, yeah, for yeah, custom stations around um, around the states, which is which is incredibly fun. Yeah, that's cool. It's I think it's uh, important for you know, like if you're doing CHR or top forty or whatever you call it there, yeah, all the time. It can only help you to force yourself to stretch your legs out and do totally. you know, an alternative station or hot AC or AC or whatever. Yeah, 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 and that's been my experience. And and working with heaps of different voices and um, even dabbled in a bit oh, of cu- yeah. country imaging as well. It's um it's been an awesome experience. Oh, and you've done a little did you bit. Give me some country imaging. No, no, I didn't. I haven't put any of that in there. Uh, okay, I didn't think so. But uh, <laughs> I need to hear what you're doing in country. I got to hear something. I'll have to shoot something through. <laughs> nice. Um, let's see here. What else? Oh, what else are you into? Are you into anything else? It could be audio related or not audio related. Are you, you know, a mountain climber? Uh, uh, <laughs> you know, like, I don't know. Uh, uh, you know. I know you enjoy the occasional beer. Uh, <laughs> correct. Who, who in radio doesn't? Um, <laughs> <Nah>. <laughs> um, yeah, I, I love getting out, um, camping, um, getting out of the city, which is something I haven't done in the last six months that I've been in Sydney. Um, so yeah. that's definitely something I'm, I've, I've got to get better at being up here. Um, but yeah, that's, that's pretty well it. So were you able to just move out there and kind of just, you know, immediately, would you get some kind of an apartment pretty close to the station? Yeah. Yeah. I've just rented a, um, uh, just met some, some people online and, um, renting a sort of like a small townhouse about 10 minutes from work. Um, perfect, nice. perfect location. Um, Yeah. Nice. That's cool. That's awesome. Worked right on. Well. Um, I did write this down two years ago, the Iron Imager, <laughs> and you beat Sidey <laughs> at uh, in LA. Yeah. So congrats, dude. Congrats on that. Thank you, mate. Thank you. Uh, but of course, I'm leading up to being a dick. So what the <laughs> hell happened this last year? <laughs> I dropped the ball. <laughs> <laughs> you dropped the freaking ball. No, no, um, Australia should be ashamed of you. No, no, no. no. But, I met my match. That's what happened. <laughs> That's cool, though. What was that experience like, though? I know we don't have to get into it too far, but I mean, basically, you're thrown into a room kind of early in the morning in the middle of a conference where lots of alcoholic beverages are being consumed. <laughs> you're given an hour to produce something. What was that experience like? Intense. So intense. Um, I can't, can't even explain it. I thought, I thought the second year would be easier. But it's not. Oh, yeah. <laughs> it's, not. it's not. Was it harder? Was it actually harder? <sighs> 
it, was, it just felt like the same. I don't know. It was. It's yeah. such a bizarre experience because people are looking over your shoulder and there's just this overwhelming fear of not finishing. Um, How many people are looking over your shoulder while you're producing your, your piece? Uh, uh, I couldn't even tell you. I just go into this like dark hole where I'm just all I can see is okay. a pro tool right. screen. Huh. Just think, go for your life, mate. Don't uh, don't mess this up. Um, now, I'm not trying to blow up your spot, so to speak. But if I recall, two years ago, you guys both, or you know, everybody, me myself included, but we kind of hit the hit it hard the night before. <laughs> And you were feeling pretty rough when you walked in there and crushed it. <laughs> I think there's and, a, there's a f- and last year, yeah, I was going to say last year, as I recall, <laughs> yeah. you're like, well, I'm not really drinking tonight. I'm having a couple, but I'm going to go and I'm going to get some good sleep. I'm going to wake up early. I'm all- and you didn't crush it. So <laughs> Maybe that's where I went I wrong. Know. There's a really funny photo that I shot through of you, myself, and I, uh, myself and I, you, myself, and Sidey. Um, standing yeah. there and the look on Sidey and I's faces and that was just before the contest just sort of says it all <laughs> yep that was uh, the, the picture I'll have it on the site yeah. where uh, Sidey's actually holding the belt and I, I'm uh, in the middle I'm the good looking one in the middle but anyway. <laughs> yeah. uh, no but uh, I remember walking up to you guys and I'm like you know, hey, how was last night? I mean, because I was feeling it too. And you were just kind of like, oh man, I don't know, it's rough. Like you were. Yeah. <laughs> I must have done classic. something, right? <laughs> exactly, exactly. Oh, All right. Well, hey, uh, w- one final thing here. Um, you might have already said it. You can recap. But, um, you, you, you know, you're still still new in this business, but you have some perspective now. Um, if you're going to offer one piece of advice to somebody that's coming up, what, what would that be? Um, piece of advice. I can only really speak from experience. Um, and for me, it was just finding, finding a really good mentor, um, that'll give you time and and give you opportunity. Um, and then just work hard, (laughs) just, just work your ass off and say yes to everything. Just do, do everything. Yeah, that makes a lot of sense. I've heard uh, the first one, though, the find a good mentor, that's good. Um, yeah. Say yes to everything. I've heard that before. It's um, it's not a bad strategy. Yeah. Don't be the guy that says no. It's not usually exactly. the person that somebody wants to hire. Yeah, exactly. And just, just put yeah. in the hours and it, it'll work out. Awesome. Well, you are on Instagram. Just look for Brad Leesk. He'll come up. Brad Leesk is on Facebook. Your SoundCloud is uh, soundcloud.com slash Brad underscore Leesk. Uh, hey, Brad, thanks so much for being on the show. I really appreciate you. Mate, like I said at the top of this podcast, I've uh, spent my my career listening to this and listening to you talk to some of the best in the world, and I've, I've learned so much from this podcast, mate. So uh, thank you for having me on. I really appreciate it. Contact the show, contribute your opinions, see additional content, or simply stay connected at producerspodcast.com.